What's up, YouTube? This Star Wolf. Check it out. People been hollering at me. You know, they uh wanted me to make a video asking me my thoughts about the uh, BBC documentary about Nip. They wanted they wanted to know how I felt. They wanted to know my thoughts about it. I did see it. I seen it the other night. Um, I seen it via uh somebody sent it to my DM. From uh, Tanique Reviews uh, channel, I checked it out. You know, it's in my opinion, it was, you know, it was cool. It was cool. I didn't really. I did have a problem with a couple of things in there. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna address that, but for the most part, it was cool. You know. Uh, I just don't. If if you notice, I don't really be making. I don't really be like making videos too much no more about Nip. And the reason why is because I don't want to pigeonhole myself. You know, I don't want to be be classified as a Nip channel because I didn't start off blogging. I didn't start off blogging about Nip. I didn't start off blogging when when uh, Nip was killed. You know me. What I blog about, I blog about politics mostly. That's what I do. You know, I'm, I'm when 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 I look at injustices, I'm for I'm for the people first and foremost. If there's any type of injustice with our people, then I'm I'm ready to attack that situation on whatever level it may be on. So that's 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 you know I make videos about things of that nature. Now when Nipsey died, I didn't just jump on that right away. I jumped on it. When uh, Big U made a video. So that was like in May or whatever. Actually, it was in May. But uh, like I said, I don't want to pigeonhole myself. And many people, you know, I, I speak with many people on a daily. And I speak with prominent people too. And they be letting me know, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't pigeonhole yourself. And, and that's real. I'm not going to pigeonhole myself and make videos about just one topic because I'm, 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 I'm so well versed in, in many things that's going on in this world. So it, it would be hard for me to even do that any anyway. So if you haven't been seeing me making videos about Nip, that's one of the reasons why. And there's no new information. And it, it's not going to be any new information that comes out because they have who they want incarcerated. And he he I know I, I've read I didn't seen comments where people talking about he's a patsy and, you know, he didn't do this and do that. These is people that's not familiar with the gang culture. These is people that ain't even been to L.A. Don't know nothing about the gang culture. Don't know nobody or nothing. Speaking about things they have no knowledge about. Bloggers making videos for views. And that's all they doing it for. They dissecting. They stand on one topic. Stand on one thing. Dissecting that a thousand ways. Just to, just to get views and likes. That's all they doing. With no real substance. They lacking substance in the videos. For real. Because they way off topic. Don't get me wrong, they good bloggers, but when it comes to this, to Nip, they way off topic because they don't know. They not on the inside. They not going to know. Now, it's people from 60s that I feel that it, it, it just boils down to this. If you from 60s then y'all should be taking care of this, period, because it's people that know, and then it's a lot of people from 60s that don't know. It's a lot of people from 60s that have claimed that they know. They don't even know. They don't even know. And I know for a fact they don't know, but it's ones that do know, and I know for a fact that they do know. They do know what's going on. My thing is take care of that within 60s. Because it's a lot of people that don't even care. Let me tell you this. A lot of people that they, they didn't even care about Nip. They still don't care about Nip. Like I said, I talk to people on a daily. People chop it up. I be chopping it up with many people. And people don't care 
Of course, of course, anybody that don't get along with 60s, that's enemies, not going to care. I speak to people all the time. I know people from everywhere. Shotgun, East Coast, the Main Streets, Overs, Mansfield, wherever, man. I know people from everywhere. And motherfuckers be like, fuck nip. Hey, what can you do with this video, though? I got motherfuckers that rap right now, and trust me, I ain't gonna expose you. I ain't gonna tell who you are. Motherfuckers from 60s right now that rap, that be getting at me like, look, let me slide you this, and then you put my video, you know what I'm saying, on your video. When you make your videos, how much you gonna charge, this and that. They don't even, look, don't, I don't even care about the nip situation. I don't even care about nip. I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get myself out there. Yeah, this is how people act. This is how people act. But look, let me hop, let me, let me hop right off into this, okay? Now, speaking on the BBC documentary, okay, it was some things that stuck out to me as far as when uh Big Skull, aka Melvin Farmer, and his homeboy Cedric was speaking, mainly Cedric. They both from A Trey Gangsters, but uh you know, he was mainly talking about how Nip was stupid. Nip felt invincible, like he couldn't be touched. He was stupid for even being up in the parking lot at his place of business without security. You know, and that, and that was true. You know, I'm not going to go as so far as to say he was stupid because those are harsh words. Those are his words. Those are words he chose, you know. I'm not finna sit up here and debate that and say he wrong or right for that. You know, I'ma just say Nip was foolish because he was foolish. Because first and foremost, you have to understand this as 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 a as a gang member, as someone that's a gang member, you always have to be on point. No matter what Nip was doing in his life, became famous, a rapper, he was doing this in the community, all this good. You still from 60s. And there's people that know you from 60s. Whether you have to look out for your homeboys or whether you have to look out for uh for other people that don't get along with your hood, you still got to be on point and look out. So was he foolish for being up there without security or being up there without homeboys who really had his back and loved him? Hell yeah. Because... It goes like this, like Cedric said. Nip, when he started getting that money, and this is a fact. This, this, what he said was facts. I backed that up 100% because I know when he started getting them checks, when he started getting that money, they needed Nip to kick in. Don't worry about who today is because I ain't finna say no names or nothing like that, but they needed Nip to kick in. Yeah. It was time for him to, yeah, you got to look out. You from 60s. Bottom line, you from 60s. So this is how it go. Of course, it's going to be jealous people. Of course, it's going to be people, even if somebody ain't jealous. Man, you getting this money, and we know you getting it now because before you was getting it, you was being looked out for. I know a lot of y'all, look, check this out. Check this out. Let me break something down for y'all. I know a lot of y'all don't like Big U. And a lot of that stems from bloggers making videos. You probably even looked at some of my videos and was like, you, you formulated in your head to where you was like, okay, I'm going to come to terms with myself. I don't like this dude. I don't like Big U. But a lot of y'all don't even know who Big U is. And y'all just, y'all really just don't like them because of the blogging. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I'm going to say this. Big U didn't put it in motion. Yeah, I know a lot of y'all don't want to hear that, huh? Yeah, he didn't put that in motion. Big U didn't put that in motion for uh, Nip to be killed or nothing like that. I know a lot of y'all be like, it, it had to come from the top. Could nobody say anybody could be at the top. Anybody, if you're a crip or a blood, anybody can be, if you're a reptable, if you're a real one, shit, you at the top anyway. 
If you didn't did shit in your past and motherfuckers can vouch for that, I'm talking about some real shit, you're going to be at the top anyway. Ain't no one person at the top. If a motherfucker wanted to do whatever they wanted to do with Nip, they didn't have to get no uh permission. All that, all that, I got to go to him and see if I, no, nah, they fixing to just do this any motherfucking way. And they did it. The person who put it in motion. Look, the person who put it in motion was in the parking lot, period. Don't ask me for no names. Don't hit my DM. Don't, none of that. The person who put it in motion was in the parking lot. They knew it was going to go down, and that's just what it was. And he was hit by his own homies, 60s, period. Yeah. Did Big U know about it? I don't know. Probably so. Probably so, probably didn't. He didn't put it in motion, but don't ask me for the name of the person who did it and all that. It's it's just not going to be, it ain't coming out. It's not, for many reasons. But anyway, if you've seen that clip where Nipsey was talking about, um, where Nipsey was taught, where he got into it with the paparazzi and the paparazzi was asking him where he took the phone and the paparazzi dude was asking him, look, I thought you was a cool guy. You're a celebrity. And Nip told him, look, I'm a 60 crip first. Did you hear what I just said? I'm a 60s crip first. Before anything. And he said, I don't go by these rules. I go by a different set of rules. I live in a different world. So Nip knew what time it was. Straight up. He was being extorted. Straight up. I know a lot of y'all don't want to hear that either. If you want to hear the real, that's just what it is. You want to hear, you want to hear, don't, don't listen to the fantasy. You want to hear Big U killed him. Big U did that, did that. I can't say that. Not going to say that either. I know some of y'all might be mad or whatever, but you know what I'm saying? You want to hear the real, that's the real, you know? And like Cedric said, Nip felt he was invincible, you know? He felt he was invincible. He was in a parking lot with 60s who didn't give a fuck about him. See, when you're a part of a gang, and this go for any gang, everybody ain't going to like everybody. Everybody ain't going to have love for everybody. Everybody ain't going to even know everybody. If you're a reputable, if you've been in the hood and you've been putting in work and doing shit and all that, yeah, of course people going to know you or whatever. But it's a lot of people that don't even get known because a lot of them is busters. A lot of them is marks. A lot of them can't even come to certain spots in the hood because it's real reputable motherfuckers that kick it at that spot every day. And they know if they come, they're going to get uh, socked out. They're going to get robbed, all kind of shit. Niggas going to go in their pockets and they don't come. So, you know, it was just 60s up there that Nip didn't fuck with. They didn't care. You know what I'm saying? Rempaul, I mean, yeah, he fucked with Rempaul. Rempaul was there, you know. I know people clowned in the past. It was like, damn, look at Rempaul. He ran. He ran fast and all that shit. But look, check this out. Have you ever been shot? Have you ever seen somebody get shot? Huh? Because there's a lot of people that was talking, talking about they would have stood there and helped. Yeah, right. You would have been dead, too. Everybody would have been making videos about you, too, talking about who is this? Who is, who is, that, who is that dude that didn't run, that stood there right by Nip? Yeah, the one that got his face blew off. Yeah, his face is stuck to the side of that white car because it got blew off. Who is that? That's who you would have been. All that hero movie type shit. Because the reality of this is when bullets is flying, when you hear that sound, you automatically know second nature to get down, duck, get out the way. Because you know what bullets will do. Especially if you've been into any type of street lifestyle to where you know and you done seen people get shot and you done shot people or whatever. You know that bullets will eat a person's face or, or head up. It don't matter where the bullet go. It'll eat your body up. Certain bullets will tear your ass up. 
That's why people be dead. That's why people be fearing. That's why Rem Paul ran. Shit, when I got shot, I got hit six times. I ran. I ran before I heard the shots. I seen the two people coming and I already knew what time it was. My survival instincts kicked in. It didn't tell me to sit there and ask them what they gonna do and all that shit. I already knew, so I got on and they started dumping and they hit me six times because I already knew what bullets do, they kill. Straight up. And I ain't gonna say Rem Paul is no punk or coward or nothing that, nothing like that for running. He's still here. He's still here to live another day. And if he wanted to put in some work with I don't think he even going to go that route, but I'm just saying if he wanted to, he could do that. All that other foolish hero shit, that shit, movie shit. You could, you could talk, you could miss me with that and talk to somebody else about that. But yeah, he was around 60s in that parking lot that didn't care. That's why they didn't bust back. That's why Cedric from a Trey Gangster said what he said in the documentary. They didn't bust back. They wasn't going to bust back. You think everybody in that parking lot didn't have a heat? A known parking lot where people was coming through, shooting, doing all kind of shit, enemies. Yeah, they heated. When people don't care, when they ain't getting a piece of the pie, yeah, they be mad and jealous. And yeah, they'll look at you like, hey, shit, I know they fixing to do this or do that. I don't even care. And they say shitty cuz was a snitch, a known snitch. I don't know. I ain't seen no paperwork. Ain't nobody seen no paperwork. Usually, you know, we look, we, we, as black people, we love exposing each other. We love making each other look bad. So why come ain't nobody made him look bad? Where the paperwork at? Why is he the exception to the rule? Where the paperwork at on him? That's what I'm talking about. Ain't no paperwork. And even if he did tell, and, 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 and paperwork don't mean nothing anyway. You can still tell. But I'm just saying, though, where the proof at? They talking about this conversation and people stop with the bullshit, all the barber shop, the stores, the fat burgers and all that. He got killed right there in the parking lot. That's just how it went down. If you knew, you would know, but you don't know. So you speculate. Got killed right there in that parking lot. I believe if he had some real ones that loved him from 60s or wherever in the parking lot with him that day, that shit would have went different. It would have went different. They probably wouldn't even tried it. They probably wouldn't even tried it. And another thing, like yeah, like I said, they, they wouldn't have tried it because motherfuckers would have bust back. Probably be a lot of motherfuckers locked up right now. All kind of shit. All kind of shit. It's a lot of grimy shit. It ain't nothing but hood shit. That's all it is, you know. That's all it is. Hell yeah, the police know what time it is, but the police don't care. They didn't like Nip. They don't like young black males anyway, especially young, successful black males. They don't care. They don't care about no crime scene, doing no crime scene right. Oh, they let people walk through the crime scene. So, you black. They don't care about you. You barely figuring out that the LAPD don't like you? You barely figuring that out, that police don't like blacks? Come on now. Come on now. But the but the documentary, it was cool, you know. It was it was cool. A lot of people feel a lot of jewels was dropped in there, you know. However, whatever, you know. One thing and another thing I wanted to speak on, you know, uh it was the uh where the uh interviewer, the white guy said that he got an anonymous email from the LAPD. I don't know how you could get an anonymous email from the LAPD or from anybody. How is it anonymous? Anonymous means you don't know who it is. You said anonymous and then the next word was LAPD. So you knew who it was. So it wasn't anonymous. Nothing can be anonymous anyway if it's in an e uh, email because it's coming from a certain IP address. Cell phone, laptop, tablet, whatever you use has an IP address. So you knew who it was coming from. And then he said that the LAPD was like, uh, look for the big man. Look towards the big man, the one with all the power. He was 
referring to Big U. Now, I don't know if I had a discrepancy with that because anonymous then LAPD. I don't trust the LAPD. I don't trust no police department, no type of officials, agents, none of that. But uh, the thing is this. Why would the LAPD even tell him to look towards Big U? And I'm not speaking in the sense I'm saying, look at Big U. He's the one behind this. I'm looking at it in the sense of, so they trying to set Big U up? See, one thing with our peoples, we always so quick to do interviews and shit with these white folks, but we don't be doing interviews with people we know, people we grew up with, people of our own, of our own stature, our own race. We'll look past them like, man, I ain't fixing it. I'm going to go to this white dude and I'm going to talk to him and, you know, I feel comfortable with him and this and that and that and this. And this white boy all the way from the UK, from London. He don't know nothing about, he don't know nothing about L.A. Nothing. But anyway, it was cool. It was all right document. I just had a discrepancy with that. Talking about you got an anonymous, anonymous tip, anonymous email from the LAPD. It doesn't sound anonymous to me. <laughs> you just said who it was. Now, if he would have said, I got an anonymous email, I don't know who it was from, but they said, look at this person or that person, then we don't know. But once you said, I got an anonymous email from the LAPD, it's not anonymous anymore. I had a discrepancy with that. I don't know if you're trying to set him up or what. I don't know. But y'all better look into this more. Y'all better look into that more. I don't even trust. I, I say the documentary was good for certain reasons, but I don't even trust that white boy, though. Just for that right there. I don't trust his ass. And if we're going to do a documentary, let the peoples do a documentary. Let somebody from 60 do a documentary. Hell, I should have did a documentary. I should have did that. But as far as that go, you know, and another thing, the police never intended on meeting Nip. I did. Look, everything I'm talking about in here, I basically talked about in my videos before. Go back and listen to them if they still there. A lot of them they didn't got rid of. They ain't there no more. But anyway, I already told y'all in the video that the police never intended on meeting Nip. I don't know why people keep saying that. Nip was going to meet with the police. He wasn't. How was he going to meet with the police? How was they going to come together and just chill when they kept arresting him and harassing him? Why would they even allow that to go on? I made a video telling y'all that. The commissioner stated that he opened his email from Nip after Nip died. And the email stated it was requesting to meet with the LAPD. So he didn't even know about a meeting until after Nip died because he didn't even open his email. And he got the email like in January or February. But you barely opening it now. I mean, that's what he said. He could have opened it back then and just didn't care. Either way, if he opened it back then or if he opened it after Nip died, he didn't respond to him. But that's that was his words. I didn't open my email until the first or the second. It was one of them days. I put that in my video after Nip died. And I seen that he requested he wanted to have a meeting with the LAPD. You wasn't even worried about that because y'all was harassing him. And I guess this is why people say the LAPD was involved or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even saying that. I'm saying straight up what I just said. Grimy ass niggas from the same set. That's just what it was. Yeah. I said that. I said that. Oh, homies, knocked him down. That's what it was. And he is being extorted. Period. Anyway, though, I'm Star Wolf. That's how I felt about the documentary. However you may feel, that's how you may feel. You know what I'm saying? That's how you may feel.
But this is how I feel. People want to know my points on the documentary. That's what it is. You know, notice the white boy didn't talk to the family. They didn't want to talk to him, probably. But anyway, I'm Star Wolf. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that like button and notification bell so you can get these videos when they drop. Make sure you share my videos on all social media platforms. Peace.